Hey guys, what's going on? It's uh, it's one peg with uh with Arn. What are you What are you doing? <laughs> well, while well, he's nesting, so I've I've deviated away a little bit from the Little Things series, um, mainly because there isn't a whole lot of stuff going on right now that I would consider relevant to make for Little Things. That tends to be stuff that not a whole lot of people in the game tend to know a lot about. And I feel like uh, with us being as late as we are in the wipe cycle, and I do have kind of a feeling that the player base is, is uh, either stagnant or maybe dropping off just a little bit compared to what it was doing with the, uh, the growth rates previously. Although, with the Rivals event, it's probably gotten a little bit of a bump now. Um, but for you guys that have been watching the series loyally, and thank you so much for coming and, and watching my stuff. Um, you know, I ha I'm not leaving it behind. It'll get made um, just as the information comes. So, if you guys have stuff that you want me to check out, or if you have some ideas on things that you think would work well for the series... Uh, please, please let me know because I would love to include it. Who knows if enough of you guys end up messaging me, maybe there's some abundance of content that'll get me making a video or two in the next week. Uh, just, it'll depend on whatever it is that you guys think will, will fit. Anyway, the purpose of this video has to do entirely with the LEDX. Just as an aside, the LEDX skin transilluminator is actually a real thing. It makes veins in people's bodies show up by illuminating them with LEDs. It's made by a company called Veinlight and costs about 630 US dollars. In the Tarkov sense, the LEDX is one of the most valuable items that you'll find in the entire game. And I would also argue that it's probably the highest valued item per slot that is actually farmable, as opposed to something that just is luckily found or discovered. I'm, I'm looking at you, red key card. I'm looking at you. I see you. Oh, I see you. I see you. With an average value of between 1 and 2 million rubles, depending on where the player base is in general in the wipe cycle, it can be an extremely, extremely lucrative item to find. Not to mention that it's necessary for certain barter trades that we'll never be able to get because of market bots. <laughs> Sorry, little, little, little rib. As well as turn-ins that we have to complete for, for certain tasks, like therapist, for instance. So this guide is going to show you where every single known spawn is in the entire game. Now there's a possibility that by the time that this is uploaded that somebody found a new one and that's cool. But this is where every known one is as of this moment. And it's also going to get into just a little bit of speculative stuff. For those of you sitting there right now grinding your teeth because I haven't gotten into anything just yet, here's your TLDR. You need these keys and the stuff that you want can be found right here. For the rest of you that aren't complete jerks and don't mind sitting through a couple of mid-roll ads so that I can feed my family, here's the rest of the guide. Okay, I'm going to break this into container and bag loot, and what the community data-loving hive mind refers to as hand-placed loot. Like Nikita Claus gingerly tiptoeing around the map, placing presents for all the little scavs and PMCs. So regarding containers and bags, Okay, again, containers and bags. Let me preface this by saying, LEDX spawns in these containers is rare as hell. Think like 0.1% or less. We're talking one out of a thousand or possibly less per container that you open. So this may not be a viable farming strategy, but it's going to be in here anyway because we're trying to be relatively completionist. It's believed that the containers that will spawn a LEDX are only on shoreline labs in Interchange. Woods Customs and Factory, as far as we can tell, do not spawn them. And Reserve, well, we'll get to that. The containers that will spawn a LEDX are buried barrel caches, dead scavs, ground caches, orange medical bags, orange medical hard cases, and sport bags. There is one other container, but I'll get to that in a bit. You will not find them in things like toolboxes, jackets, weapons crates, or anything like that. Just the ones I mentioned, and again, only on shoreline labs and interchange. Containers on shoreline labs and interchange. Okay? Okay. Now that we've covered the RNG side, let's look at all of the hand place loot. First, the obvious choice, labs. Lenex is in the lab are located in the medical wing and the main central lab area. They will not be found anywhere else. In order to get all of the spawns, 
you will need a green key card and a blue key card. First, the open spawns. The most obvious and mostly rushed ones on the map are located underneath the golden dome on the central lab floor. There are three spawns here. The first, on top of this barrel on the right, the second on top of this barrel on the front of the forklift, and the third on top of this barrel on the far left. The next open spawn is inside of the server room office on top of the desk next to this laptop. It's also very commonly rushed and has a spawn point darn near right next to it. Newly discovered spawns are behind the green and blue locked doors. Inside of the green lab room, G22, toward the back of the room on the left, you'll find one inside of this metal tin. That kind of looks like a cookie tin, doesn't it? I guess we'll just call them cookie tins from now on. Man, now I want some cookies. Uh, babe, you feel like making some chocolate chip cookies? No? All right. All right. I tried. Inside of the blue room, located at G11 on the map, you can find a LEDX on these metal cart shelves, which also share spawns with ophthalmoscopes and stims, so still worth looting if you come up dry. Next is Interchange. The spawns on Interchange are a little more spread out. It's likely that if you get to one of these areas to try to farm it, you'll have to be there very, very early. If you aren't, it'll likely already be farmed, save for one location, but we'll get to that in a second. Interchange has two locked rooms with spawns. For these, you'll need the Emercom Medical Unit Key, or MES Key, and the Ultra Medical Storage Key, a new addition with the Interchange map update. First, the open spawns. Outside of the mall in the parking lot, located between the center mall entrance and IDEA, is this ambulance. The back of the ambulance can spawn a LEDX. The next area where they spawn is inside of the store Mantis, which is located down the main hallway from the central entrance to the mall. On the left will be a large lit sign that shows the store's name. Inside is a triage area that contains five cookie tins. Check each one for a possible LEDX spawn. If you go further down the main hall and turn left, you'll find the Emercom medical unit with its plastic 1990s Jeep Wrangler windows. Inside, you'll want to look on all of the metal medical cart shelves, as well as inside of each of these cookie tins. There's about a dozen potential spots, but the one that's been seen the most is located in the corner here on this cart. The last spawn requires some legwork. Outside of the mall in the power station, there was added a power switch inside of the station itself. If you're wandering through the mall and end up wondering whether or not the switch is turned on, you'll be able to easily tell by whether or not the overhead lights in the mall are on, and you can also potentially hear alarms going off with some strobe lights, or the sounds of arcade machines, or possibly little kids' rides that are straight out of a horror film and are desperately begging to be put down. Once the power is on, you'll head to the Oli side of the mall upstairs in front of Techlight. Across the hall is a corner office with all of the windows blown out. In the back of this office is a locked door that opens with the medical storage key. This door is not accessible with the power off. Inside, there are several defibrillator, LEDX, and ophthalmoscope spawns. People have reported getting an average of one LEDX for every couple of raids that they've done where they've unlocked the door, so this could be incredibly lucrative. With the new version of the mall becoming much more widely understood by the player base, it's quite likely that you'll need a team in order to secure this room if you're planning on turning on the power. Lots of people camp both the power station and the Emercom location due to the high traffic the areas have generated as of late. Next is Shoreline. Shoreline offers the most potential for loot at the least amount of cost. At the moment, the keys required to access all of the Shoreline loot spawns total less than 1 million rubles, with only two of them costing more than even 80 to 100k. For the keys that are connected via balconies, make sure you check them both, as keys like 313 only cost around 10,000 rubles, where 314, which is connected directly to it, currently is market listed at over 150k. The keys that you need are, for the West Wing, 104, 205, 216, and 301. For the East Wing, 107, 222 or 226, 306 or 308. 313 or 314, and 328. Once you're on Shoreline, I'd recommend bringing both a red and blue stim and running with a pistol. This will give you a significant boost to your stamina pool and regeneration rate, as well as a strength boost to help you run faster. And you run fastest in this game by holding a pistol. Combined, this will likely get you to the resort before most everyone else, depending on your spawn. First, the outside spawns. 
Outside of the front of the resort by the helicopter, there is an ambulance that's best known for a blue keycard spawn on the passenger side doorstep. In the back, however, next to the med bag, there is also a Ledex spawn here. Heading into the resort in the west wing, you want to begin with room 104 and check the desk and both sets of shelves. Heading upstairs, room 205 on the nightstand has a Ledex spawn. Down to room 216 also has several medical spawns located in this area. On to 301 upstairs is likely the overall best opportunity you have for obtaining a Ledex because you have several spawns located right inside the front door and then several more around the corner on the tabletop here as well. The first floor of the admin building in the cafeteria has a Ledex spawn on the metal cart behind the counter next to this food tray. In the east wing, you want to start with accessing room 107 and check both desks as well as the shelves behind each one. Upstairs in 227, which does not require a key, there is a spawn on top of this washing machine. Next, rooms 222 and 226 are connected via balconies. So depending on which one you enter, you want to check the medical spawns on top of these inside of 222 and the shelving behind the door of 226. Upstairs on the third floor in 306, there are medical spawns as well as down the hall in 313 or 314 on top of this tall stack of boxes. Lastly, on shoreline is room 328, which has several medical spawns as well. Our last map is Reserve. Reserve is an interesting beast. There's a lot of speculation about both hand-placed and container spawns. According to my research, there is one hand-placed location and several medical containers. The medical containers may contain loot, but we aren't sure, as the community seems a little split by the data that they've gotten. I can say I haven't seen or had anyone tell me they found a Ledex in a medical box of any kind on reserve, but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened or won't happen in the future. There is one static location inside of the Rook building. When you head inside, you want to go up the main staircase to the second floor and turn in the same direction as the white help spray-painted sign that's on the wall here. Think L for Ledex and L for help. At least that's how I remember it. The RBSMP key is used to open this door where you will find a Ledex inside on the second set of shelves on the right. Now this last bit is speculative. As I said before, nowhere is it listed that Reserve actually has containers that spawn a Ledex. But if I'm going to be thorough, I should include this just in case. Reserve has something unique that no other map has, aside from glue car and a running train and stationary weapon placements and uh, two marked key rooms. Well, okay. Other, th other than that, there are specific large crates that can be looted in the underground garage. Now, I've generated a super basic, basic, basic map for everyone, and I realize my MS Paint skills are garbage, but you'll get the idea. In order to access these, you'll need four keys. PSP1, PSP2, PS81, and PS82. We'll just call them the PS keys. Now, these keys do run a bit expensive, but they can be worth it. In accessing these crates, even if you don't find a Ledex, things like Paracord, Sugar, GPUs, Aquamari and several other valuable items will spawn in them, which still makes the loot very much worth it. There are three crate types in each of these cages. Ration, which is food, medical, meds, obviously, and technical, which is electronics and barter items. PS81 and PS82 are the most lucrative for medical items. PS81 has two medical crates, and PS82 has three. PSP2 is mainly a ration room, and has rations and tech crates mostly. And PSP-1 also is a big ration room with four ration crates and one of each of the other two. It also has a lot of loose food and snacks and juice and stuff like that floating around. So if you are in need of that for whatever reason, this is a really good place to find it. Of all the rooms and areas on reserve for an abundance of valuables, this is likely the most underrated area on the entire map, in my opinion. And is often overlooked in favor of more commonly rushed areas. This one would be a relatively safe place to farm for valuables, at least at the moment. Anyway, that's what I have for today, guys. I really hope that you guys found this to be valuable. I'd like to say a quick thank you to my sponsor, my uh, my sub button. Uh, so if you guys uh, feel like you know clicking the, the button there, uh, I would be very appreciative. 
Oh, and uh, if you happen to be watching this on April 18th, I'm more than likely live, like right now, uh, because I am doing a subathon right right now um, in the in the morning of the 18th. I start at like 6 a.m. or something. So uh, come and say hi, um, or or don't, and uh, maybe I'll see you, and maybe maybe I won't, and uh, I'll make another video the next time anyway that you can ignore me for. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.